Hello everyone ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Aeronautica Imperialis Imperial Navy Thunderbolt Fury Tutorial. For my German speaking audience, ihr könnt auf das deutsch vertonte Video klicken, wenn ihr in der Videobeschreibung auf Imperial Navy Aeronautica Imperialis Deutsch tut klickt und dort eure Variante anschauen. Zurück zum Englischen. Back to English. This set was provided by, to me by Kraken Wargames, a small German company known for gaming mats of high quality standard. And I start with the tutorial right now on my airbrush place. I primed the miniature with a white primer and used a red spray by Vallejo Model Air to get some red striping on the flanks of the back part and on the flyer's nose. For the color names, please check the video description, cause I will uh, just say I use a black or uh, I use a dark red or stuff like that, so that you can decide which brand of color you use, but you still can uh, decipher which tone it would be. So this red I spray on the miniature is a, a bit darkened cherry red, and then I masked it where it should stay red with uh, Tamiya masking tape. The next step is an airbrush coat with a sand yellow, uh, Vallejo model air on this part, and uh, there are several layers needed to spray over the red, very vibrant color, but after that it got a nice, nice sandy yellow finish on the flanks, on the heck, uh, on, the, on the wings and all the parts that are on the upside of the plane. And as you can hear, I am not a native speaking English person. I am from Germany, but I think uh, I get this little excursion to you for uh, a tutorial on Aeronautica Imperialis. You can also watch the Fighter Bomber tutorial on English. Maybe you like this, it's a bad mood tutorial, but now Without further ado, back to this miniature. In the next step I use a brownish tone, a mid-tone, to get some desert camo pattern on the aircraft's upper side, some lines, smooth lines on the wings that work over the middle section of the cockpit to the back part, and even the heck rudder will get some of these brown coats. After the brown paint has dried enough, I mix a bit of a darkish gray in the airbrush. So a mix of this brown tone and this darkened gray, um, so that I get a, a bit lesser saturated dark brown and I spray it in the middle of the pattern that I sprayed before to get a bit of color variation here. And uh, after this, it's the downside of the plane. I use a grayish blue, so I think um, even it's 40k and there are all these high-tech technological stuff and radar and whatever, I think it would be nice if the plane is colored that you can't see it properly from below. When you're staying on the ground watching up um, and uh, if this plane is flying over you, the sky is like a bluish white, uh, very bright, so you can see it less. So I thought I use a kind of World War II pattern where the downside of the plane is in a bright uh, sky color. After the first coat I mished, uh, I mished, sorry uh, this was German, I mixed a bit of uh, white in the grayish blue 
and get a bit of layering spray paint up the tip of the wings, um, the front wings, the back wings, the whole main structure and uh, get a bit of color variation so that it doesn't look so uninteresting. After all this paint has dried, I give it a coat of matte varnish and now at the painting table I use a bright red, in this case Mephiston red, to get the red sprayed parts a bit brighter, a bit more vibrant and paint it all up, leaving the recesses in the dark. And before you got, st got a stroke or anything else, uh, my color is diluted with thinner medium right in the painting pot, cause um, I'm uh, a bit grumpy when it comes to wet palettes. Uh, I often flip them over or um, brush them away from the desk by accident, so I use my pre-diluted color right off the pot. After all these red parts are done, I go further with recess shading. I use a dark brown wash or shade, in this case uh, Agrax Earth Shade by Citadel, diluted uh, with one to one mix with a thinner medium and get it in all the recesses and all the nuts and crannies to give it a bit of, yes, a bit of depth. Most people, uh, when they start to paint, will uh, put this shade all over the miniature, but I think it's more efficient if you just use the recesses, cause you don't need to repaint all the surfaces again. This is uh, a bit time efficient and material efficient. You don't need so much paint if you just um, shade the recesses. And you're uh, a bit faster. At first, this would uh, look like it would take a serious amount of time, but overall, when you see the whole miniature, um, it would take less time when you recess shade than when you shade all the miniature with the shade and then work the colors up again. Next part is the downside. I use a dark blue wash, uh, very, very diluted, but I figured out this is a bit of too dark. So I put the shade on the plane. After that I wash out my, uh, my brush with water and with a dampened brush, water dampened brush, I uh, put the recess shading on so that I smooth it out a bit and it doesn't look that harsh. Why did I use blue instead of maybe contrast apothecary white? I think it looks fine with the slight color var variation to this bluish gray. After that it's time for highlights. I use a little blister sponge, a bit of a light gray blue, in this case Ulthuan gray, and stipple the color on the plane with a sponge on all the edges, but sometimes I go further on the surfaces to get a bit of a, a rough look. And uh, I repeat this process with all the colors you see here with a little bit of orange red for the red parts and uh, on the further occasion with a bit of beige or bone tone for the camo pattern. I think in this scale these uh, sponged stippled highlights look a bit better than when you get brushed, dry brushed or layered highlights cause the brushed or the layered highlights are um, on, the, on the whole edge. And if you stipple you got this variation of uh, a bit less color intensive stipples, uh, a bit more intensive and you don't get the straight line, you get small dots on the edges. And I think on this scale it looks way way better than these vibrant, very harsh 
painted or dry brushed highlights. For the camo pattern, as I said, this is a dark beige a steel allegiant wrap. Uh, I use it for the brownish grayish camo pattern pieces so that there is a bit of stippling going on there. You don't see it very much on the on the camera but this step is only to prepare for the next part that's with a lighter beige stone Karak stone where I stipple on all the camo pattern on the sand yellow and on the dark yellow. Um, the benefit of this piece of accent or highlight work is that it all look a bit rough and used. So like the plane is in action for some weeks without proper maintenance and the paint chipped off a bit and it looked like yeah, this plane is used in war and not rolling out fresh of the hangar. Next step, repeat with a bone color, Ushapti bone, for kinda the brightest, harshest paint chips on all the edges. Sometimes a little bit of sponging on, on the plane's wings to get chipping on there, like um, the Thunderbolt Fury had uh, scored a critical hit on another uh, aircraft, um, the other one explodes and uh, drew debris flying all over and hit a bit of the paint on the wings and um, uh, chipped it off. So it looks more grounded to earth, more natural, not so comical like um, the red paint would suggest at first. This technique is also possible to be used on larger planes and maybe uh, tanks of a Warhammer 40k 28 to 32 mil scale. Uh, you could uh, choose to use this technique on all your your little nifty tanks and stuff, and I think it would use uh, it would look like used and uh, like more natural than straight highlighting. After this process there are the detail work steps like the tubing, the metal parts, the engine compartments, some decals for the variation. This one is part of the so-called 429 Bomb Squadron, the Red Furies. So this is why there are the red stripe and the red nose pieces and the decals I use would be painted afterwards um, from these black eagle head to a red eagle head. I prepare all the pieces where the decals would fit later with an art coat finish, so a gloss varnish to seal the surface that the decal would sit better and then apply the decals. The black 8 and the other black logo on the winged tips. The stylized eagles on the side rudder on the back and the black, uh, no sorry, the white 8 on the red stripe at the side. Here uh, in the tutorial I do a bit of a mistake. I apply the decal and after that I take a knife, like here, and cut the decal in half so that the decal would fit better with this uh, recess in the middle. Afterwards uh, it's like, oh, uh, I would have been uh, worked out it better when I cut the decal in half on the transfer paper, but 
even if you're experienced, you do some stupid things then in a while, and uh, this is part of it. I highly recommend if you put a decal over a recess, just cut it in half before you apply it. It would be much, much easier. And as you see, the art coat layer beneath the decal works out fine so that I can push the decal from left to right better than on the unglossed surface, if this is something you could say. After the decals are applied, I use another coat of gloss varnish of art coat to fix the decals so that the decals are layered in between two coats of art code and are put in place totally. After this gloss coat, I use a Le Mihen medium or a matte thinner medium to get the shine of the gloss varnish away. Um, as I figured out over the years when I paint miniatures, it is better to get a matte coat over the gloss varnish before you spray varnish the whole miniature. Cause um, if um, I let it sit in the gloss part and varnish spray, spray varnish over it, it's uh, something in between. It's like a satin varnish and if I give it a matte coat now and spray varnish it later it's like you never you, you don't see that there ever been any gloss varnish so little advice here um, maybe you can you can uh, use this technique and uh, get the same results after the decals are applied the next step is repaint the decals yes i put a bit of black color on the black decals to give it a little bit of um, like a spray painted stencil look like there is put down a stencil on the plane and with a big airbrush the numbers or symbols are sprayed on and the stencil is removed too fast or doesn't um, fit right, so that that's a bit of a splodging here and there on the ed edges. Same on the white eights. Uh, cause I don't like the the very vibrant white. I work with uh, Oath One Ray to give it a bit of a, a bit of a, like not so exciting white, so a bit muted, not so on the nose. I would say. Next step, I take red in this case corn red and paint the eagle head cause of the red fury thing um, nothing you have to do uh, take mephiston red so a brighter red after that paint the head again and some like chipping on the white eights on these stripes like that there is the top layer the, red, uh, the white color is a top layer that's chipped away a bit and the color underneath, the red, is show, showing through. Then it's time for the orange red and uh, I get a bit of highlighting again. So as we sponged the dots on the edges before, I like to get some of these lines clearer, um, uh, fix it so that I uh, combine two of these dots to a little bit of a small line. I paint some clear lines on the surfaces for scratches and stuff and um, get a more kind of precision highlighting. The goal is not to layer the highlights on but to accentuate these previous sponged highlights a bit. If this doesn't make sense Please write it in the comment section, and I think we could um, we can talk about this step again. I don't know if I declared it right. So uh, the thing of uh, not native English speaking. 
I use grey in the next step to paint these tubing and get a little bit of small shipping dot thingies on the black 8 that there is a bit of BAM! There is a hit, or there was a hit, and the color uh, variates a bit. And uh, after that gray tone, you can highlight the tubing with two brighter gray steps. If you want to know which color I used uh, in this case, just look in the video description where all the colors are linked. But on this occasion, I go for these laurels on the decal first. I use uh, three gray, grayish green tones. So these are not vibrant greens that are a bit muted greens to get the laurel a green touch. After I applied all these colors, um, the laurel is a bit, little bit, um, little bit combined in color I ten I intensity with the the sand tone of the of the wing so you can see it that good but as the owner of the miniature you know that the laurel is there and uh, that's uh, sometimes a little bit better than that the laurel is that on the nose that you see oh there's a laurel on the wing and um, you see it directly sometimes details are better when you um, inspect the miniature up close. So these was was the steps with the gray tubing and uh, it looked fine and everything is highlighted as you can see here and uh, with the next step I think it was the engine compartment now that we get a little bit of silver down. Oh no, uh, wait, I use the defining steps with scratches and a little bit of uh, more edge highlighting on the sandy parts too. Uh, on this case I use Carrack Stone for the first scratching pieces, some scratches in the red colors, some on the wings and define it all with a bit of this bone tone. Oshakti bone, get a bit of more of the chipping down to get it a little bit of a natural feeling. It's important that you don't overdo it. It's not a gritty, gritty orc plane where it's enough that the pilot just uh, imagines enough that the plane is still flying. This one is a te technical marvel and if there is too much damage it would look like the airplane would be downed some time before, so don't overdo it. A final touch on this weathering part is brown, where I go on some of the edges and put a little bit of this brown down, that it's like the paint is chipped that far that you see the, um, the anti-rust or the rust preventing layer underneath all these paint coats. And um, same as before, don't overdo it. It's, it doesn't need to look like it's a downed aircraft. It just looks like it's still afloat. And here I show you some examples where you can put all these little, little dark brown dots on the turbine and the engine uh, deck, on the wings on the front part and side parts on the wings mainly, and you can use it on the other side. But, but, keep in mind, don't overdo it. This is a very dark color and if you see too much, it would look a bit off, look a bit too, too weathered. And also, this is a technique that you can apply on all your um, maybe 140k bigger models uh, where you want to do a bit of chipping. Uh, previous years I chipped like um, sponge and sponge on the dark color. 
And now I find out this is a more precise technique to get weathering down when you sponge on the brighter color and get your dark chips on with a brush later. And as you see, it worked out fine and looks very, very realistic, I think. But now, as previously mentioned, we are uh, on to the engine compartment. I use a really, really dark, true metallic metal color, in this case Iron Warrior by Citadel, to put down the first coat on the engine and on the weapons, on the upcraft's nose. Um, if you are more in this uh, league of uh, non-metallic metals, just work these steps with uh, black over grey tones and stuff. But I think on this miniature scale it's, uh, it's good enough to use true metallic metals. Uh, even if you uh, keep in mind that we still shade it, highlight it a bit and then get down a little bit of weathering on the engine compartments like a little bit of um, dark burnt appearance on the back parts of the turbines, so I think it would fit nicely to get true metallic metals down. After the step with Iron Warrior, I get a little bit of shading down with Agrax Earthshade, a dark brown shade on the weapons, on the engine compartments and on the turbines front part to get a little bit of, of shading there, to get it a little bit more of definition. Why do I use the brown wash instead of a blackish, oilish wash? Hmm, I think it's uh, kind of combining the appearance of the metal parts, cause it's a little bit of brown in the shadows and the main compartments of the plane, when you look from the upper side, are brownish. Red is kind of also in a brownish spectrum, I think. Um, from the natural colors, so I think the brown shade would do better than a black shade. After that I use a little bit of pigment powder, dilute it with water and put it down on the engine compartments and the weapons to get a little bit of weathering, a little bit of rust. Um, it's kind of more okay, I as a painter know that is there, that uh, it's a little bit of weathered. You don't see it uh, that much in the end result. So if you don't like pigment powder, just uh, just skip this step. After the pigments have dried, I use a mid-tone metallic, true metallic metal, and uh, paint some highlights on the engine compartments and the weapons. This is followed by an even brighter true metallic metal tone. And keep in mind that you just do less of the highlight the higher you go with the color's brightness. So the step would take considerable less time. After the step there's a little bit more of the weathering. Yes, I do much of weathering so that it used uh, look like a used gritty airplane. So the next piece that is the weathering is the darkened burnt engine compartments and some streaks on the wings. So if you look on uh, some uh, actual aircraft or uh, plane pictures, for um, example, like World War II planes, you just see the streaks that go from the wing's front part to the wing's back side, so that the color is a little bit lighter or darker on occasions, and um, the 
more the plane is used, the less maintenance, maintenance it gets, the more of these streaks are there. And to get this more natural, down-to-earth feeling, I would paint these streaks in the next step with Reichland Flesh Shade and Agrox Earth Shade and get a little bit of grey and black on the engines so that you can can uh, fake these these heat uh, color var variation on the metal and it looked used, yes. The overall thing is that this aircraft should look like it's used for at least two or three missions or rough missions um, and don't look like it's uh, just a fine check up and uh, roll off to the to the runway just from the hangar go to the mission no it looked it, it should look like it's on the campaign and there is not much time to do maintenance and it looks way better than a clean aircraft I think so this is a step with a streaking I mentioned uh, previously I uh, just do small lines from the wings front part and go to the main surface down that there are variations in streak length and uh, widthness and uh, put it down all over the wings in uh, two thin coats yes and after that I use Agrax Earth Shade but diluted on a one-to-one -one base with a thinner medium. Put some streaks down on the downside, on the bluish parts, and uh, then after that go back to the upper part and add some more darken streaks there. Don't overdo it on the downside and uh, just keep in mind that you dilute the paint enough that these streaks I don't get too dark and look out of place. It's like small color variations uh, instead of uh, oh on the nose streaks like um, when you use kind of AK interactive streaking grime or stuff like that. After we finished all the streaks, there is not much to do. There are some of the uh, light things on the wings and the cockpit color. So I start uh, randomly with some colors. You see the, the colors for the lights here? I go from a really, really saturated grass green over a lime green to a yellow and after that to a white. And you see the blue tunes, uh, uh, tones for the cockpit, sorry. And um, I go with these there. I use a kind of gemstone technique. The lights are painted with a very saturated grass green and on the right lower part then is the lime green, then even more right lower part on the edge is the yellow and the white is on the upper left part of the light so that you get a little bit of uh, a reflection point. The cockpit's color it's uh, like an inverted gemstone. I go with a brighter color as you see uh, in uh, a little bit. I go with a brighter color on the upper edge go even brighter and the last piece is a little a little line of a grayish white old one gray I think was it um, and a little bit of reflection point on the lower opposite edge so that you can see it here you can uh, change all the colors as you like as you maybe think okay a uh, blue cockpit the, uh, color or cockpit glass it's uh, too too standard I want to go with some other
color. You can go a dark green, a red, orange, blackish tone. You can go whatever color you like. It's always the same steps. Go with a lighter color on the edge, on one of the edges, uh, and get the brightest color in the opposite corner to get a little bit of glassy reflection. And I think this would fit fine on this scale. After the cockpit is finished, there is not much to do. I just uh, coated the whole plane with a satin varnish to get a little bit of uh, protection that the color won't be lost by grabbing the miniature and some uh, protection if the miniature falls down. You could also get a little bit of gloss varnish at, as a last step on all these little lights and on the glass compartments that you get a little bit of more of these reflection things, but I don't think it's necessary because you got your reflection painted like this. And after that you only need to paint the uh, recesses around the glass, paint the base in a nice color you like. I go with a greenish radar image and a very dark black base like you see on this next part and the miniature is finished. I hope you can, could follow me enough. I know, I know, I am a terrible English speaker, but uh, you got the pictures also and I think you could follow the steps. This is the ready, battle ready Thunderbolt Fury of 429 Bomb Squadron that had shot uh, many, many orcish planes of the Bad Moon Clan and uh, it was fun to paint. And you can click on some of my Aeronautic Imperialis content here on the screen. Leave a like, comment if you don't uh, get everything and bye bye, keep on wargaming!